Alex Davis agonisingly fell just one run short of his maiden first class 100, but Lancashire are still deciding control of their LV County Championship match with Kent at Emirates Old Trafford at the halfway stage. Kent began the second morning well, debutant Jordan Clark edging the very first ball from Darren Stevens behind. The home team had started the day on 317 for five and were now six down by the time that Davis got the three runs he required to make it to the half century mark for the second innings in succession. This one had come off 151 balls, spending ages in the 40s, and it was reached with the keeper's seventh four. The total had moved on to 344 when Peter Siddle threw the bat and nicked Ivan Thomas behind after making a dozen. Thomas, though, had less success against Davis, who struck him for three fours in one over as the youngster began to race through the numbers. He's made a very impressive start to the season with the bat, his career best 89 in his previous innings, proving to be the big difference between his side and Derbyshire last week. Then he played brilliantly with the tail, just as he was doing again this time out. Again, he made the best score of his career. This the boundary which carried him into the 90s for the very first time. But having got to 99, he for once didn't move his feet as he had done and edged a drive off Mitch Clayden to Matt Coles. You had to feel for the 20-year-old, but his day will no doubt come soon enough. It was time for the rest to have a go, and in trying to do that, Tom Bailey skied a catch to Sam Billings off Clayden after making 21. Kyle Jarvis was another crucial cog in that win at Derby last week with runs and wickets and the number 11 again proved that he can bat. That went for an enormous six. Jarvis made a rapid 26 and was left unbeaten when Simon Kerrigan gave Clayden his fourth wicket of the innings. Lancashire all out for 444 at lunch. That was a very handy total on this pitch and it was vital now faced with such a big score that Daniel Bell Drummond and Joe Denley saw off the new ball. That they did just about, but Siddle, making his home debut for Lancashire, could count himself very unlucky. Time and time again, the Australian found the edge of Bell Drummond's bat, but each time the ball managed to avoid the slips by the slimmest of margins. And it wasn't only Siddle who was cursing his luck, as the two Kent openers put on 62 runs. It looked as if it might be one of those days for Bell Drummond, who could also have been run out. It was a very nervy knock from the 21-year-old. But his luck did run out on 28 when Jarvis began his third over by finding the edge, allowing Stephen Croft to mop up in the slips. Jarvis was able to move the ball both ways and in his next over, he caught the inside edge of Rob Key's bat to send him on his way for five. Jarvis took a championship best of five for 13 in the win over Derbyshire and he now had figures of three for 12 when he had Denley held by Paul Horton after making 28. Jarvis and Davis have been Lancashire's standout performers so far this summer and the latter was called into action again as Brendan Nash failed with an uppercut. That gave Clark his maiden wicket in the first class arena but Lancashire were then held up by Darren Stevens, who was soon putting back to ball. But he too was on his way after the tea break shouldering arms to the wrong delivery from Siddle who certainly deserved his success. Stevens departed for 15 and Billings nearly followed. Siddle denied this time as the drive flew just out of reach of the slips. As in the defeat at Essex last week, Sam Northeast coped with the bowlers better than any of his teammates, Kerrigan here being struck for a very rare boundary off his bowling this term. However, Northeast was involved in the dismissal of Billings, who was too late setting off for a quick single to Alvaro Peterson at mid off. Davis completed the run out to send Billings packing for 28. That left Kent on 190 for six, an innings which just couldn't get going. Matt Coles looked as if he would stay with Northeast until the close of play. But to what was the very last ball of the day, Coles played a shot that would not have pleased his teammates one little bit. He was bowled for 19. In spite of the floodlights, it was bad light which then took the players off before rain arrived meaning that Kent ended the day on 214 for seven, which leaves them 230 runs behind and needing another 81 to avoid being asked to follow on. Northeast, who will go again on 48, is key to that.